Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we're going to be discussing the Leaky Cauldron, a famous wizarding pub and inn that serves as a gateway between the muggle and magical worlds. More specifically, we're going to be discussing whether or not muggles can enter this magical pub, as there seems to be conflicting information floating around. Now, provided that the famous wizarding pub is a gateway between both worlds, it should go without saying that it has two entrances, one in Diagon Alley and another on the Muggle Street of Charing Cross Road in London's West End. However, it's also worth noting that the Leaky Cauldron, built in the early 1500s, existed long before Charing Cross Road had ever even been conceived, existing far in advance of the Muggle Street. In fact, the Leaky Cauldron was created two centuries before the imposition of the International Statute of Secrecy, which meant that it had always been visible to muggle eyes. While the pub was, from the first, a place for witches and wizards to congregate, whether Londoners or out-of-towners up for the day to shop for the latest magical ingredients or devices, muggles were not turned away or made to feel unwelcome, even though some of the conversations, not to mention pets, caused many an unwary drinker to leave without finishing his mead. It's now hard to imagine that a fully fledged wizarding pub hub could be allowed to exist with direct access from a muggle street, but those were different times. It's even harder to imagine if we consider that the persecution of witches, wizards, was widespread in Britain only a few centuries earlier. But in the present day, what's the deal with the leaky cauldron? If it exists on a muggle street, how could it not be accessible? The people hurrying by didn't glance at it. Their eyes slid from the big bookshop on one side to the record shop on the other, as if they couldn't see the leaky cauldron at all. In fact, Harry had the most peculiar feeling that only he and Hagrid could see it. Before he could mention this, Hagrid had steered him inside. What this tells me is that the leaky cauldron, just like Hogwarts, has been magically concealed to look uninviting to muggles. When Wizarding Society decided that Hogwarts needed to be hidden, a complex range of concealment charms were put in place that made Hogwarts appear as ruins, along with signs telling them to keep out. The Leaky Cauldron must have shown something similar, perhaps a closed down pub. Apparently, when the International Statute of Secrecy was imposed, the Leaky Cauldron was given special permission to stay open by then Minister for Magic, Ulick Gamp. When the Statute of Secrecy was imposed, the Leaky Cauldron, great British wizarding institution that it had become, was granted special dispensation to continue its existence as a safe haven and refuge for wizard kind in the capital. Though insistent on many powerful spells of concealment and good behavior from all those who used it, the Minister for Magic, Ulick Gamp, was sympathetic to the need of wizards to let off steam under the difficult new conditions. But still, all of this was before the existence of Charing Cross Road. With the new road proposed, even more problems arose for the Leaky Cauldron, even threatening its very existence. The Leaky Cauldron faced one of its most difficult challenges in the late 19th century, with the creation of Charing Cross Road, which ought to have flattened it completely. The Minister for Magic of the day, the tediously long-winded Faris Spavin, gave a melancholy speech in the Wizengamot, explaining why the Leaky Cauldron could not, this time, be saved. When Spavin sat down seven hours later, having finished his speech, he was presented with a note from his secretary, explaining that the wizarding community had rallied, performing a mass of memory charms. Some say, to this day, that the Imperious Curse was used on several Muggle Town planners, though this has never been proven and that the Leaky Cauldron had been accommodated in the revised plans for the new road. Certainly, the Muggle architects involved never did understand why they had left a gap in their plans for buildings, nor why that gap was not visible to the naked eye. And there you have it, a bit of history on the Leaky Cauldron and the International Statute of Secrecy. What video next? Leave a comment down below. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.